Hey there. I had the flu last week and it has been one of the longest weeks of my life. And I could not get, I just couldn't wait to get back and get painting again. <clears throat> I typically try to do a little bit more of an arty kind of um, acrylic pour with a little bit of an abstract kind of flair to it. But um, till I get my land legs back, I'm just trying out a few different things, experimenting just with some fun stuff. And um, so one of the artists that I like to watch on YouTube, who was one of the original acrylic fluid artists that I started to watch at the beginning was, um, besides Anne-Marie Ritterhoff, is Melly D. And Melly D is known for doing her puddle pours. And that's actually how I started by experimenting with puddle pours and then I went to dirty pours and that kind of thing and now to more of my abstract fluid art that has that feathery kind of look and a lot of cells but I'm gonna go back today and do a puddle pour so I've got a white canvas here that is 20 by 24 so it's pretty good sized and I'm using all Deco Art products. And the reason I'm doing Deco Art here lately is I had a ton of paints that I had accumulated and I wanted to experiment with them. They are user friendly. Uh, they're on the lower to medium end price for a craft paint. You don't have to use artist grade paint to get gorgeous paintings and that's the point I'm trying to get across is that the everyday person, homemaker, full-time employee, wherever you might work, can come home and do this with deco art paints or you know you can use cheaper ones like the the craft smart paints which are the, the cheapest that you can get at Walmart or anywhere. Um, those are the cheapest. They're going to be the, the most fluid uh, and the least pigmented in the bottles. But DecoArt is, uh, is um, DecoArt Americana, and pretty much what comes in the bottle when you pour it into your cup, if you add Floetrol, which I use Flood Floetrol latex based, if you add Floetrol to your paint, a one to one ratio, it's gonna be pretty much ready to pour just the way it is without having to add water or whatever. Um, I've not really done many paintings at all uh, with just water and paint. I know people do. I prefer to put something in it to give it some um, strength. To me, water is going to break it down. It still, you know, watercolor is a beautiful form of art, and you can add water to acrylic paints and get a watercolor effect. I just don't want to do the watercolor effect. So. <clears throat> I always add something to my paint to bind to it and to give it a little bit more fluidity and strength with the color present. And um, I used, I have used Floetrol for over 20 years. I was a decorative artist and I used it for faux finishes all the time instead of a glazing medium. And so I'm very familiar with Floetrol and, uh, and how it works very comfortable with it and I know it will last and that's my take on it. Um, so the colors today that I have used, DecoArt has a new line of uh, metallics called Extreme Sheen. This is silver. I have the traditional titanium white, lamp black. This is a beautiful pearl, purple pearl. It's one of their metallics that you know, is one of the colors. I love the dioxazine purple, which is the deep purple. So that's in that cup. This is purple rain, which is more of a medium purple. So th this is a purple that's a pearl, the darker purple. This would be a medium purple, which is purple rain. And in the smallest container, I have mulberry, which I wanted just a little bit slightly different version of a purple than what I have, 
that's kind of in the purple family. It's between purple and red. It's got the red tones in it, and purple is the color of the year. It's the Pantone color of the year, and uh, violet, all shades of violet are, you know, are great. So what I wanted to do today is a petal pour with purples. So I'm moving my bottles of paint. And I've got lots of white mixed up because that's going to be my extra paint that I'll probably pour around the edges and things like that. I do have some black and I'm going to incorporate black into it. I am not I did put Floetrol in here, and I also used Vallejo, which is an Italian pouring medium and gloss medium, and I did about um, an 80-20 ratio on that. I will put that in my comments under the video. I got Vallejo through an art supply. Uh, I think I got it through Blick. And, um, so I added Vallejo pouring medium into all of my paints as well as some Floetrol. I don't have quite a one-to-one -one ratio of Floetrol. It's a little bit less today. So it's not quite an ounce of Floetrol for every ounce of paint. I'm trying to level out my push pins on this canvas. It appears to be a little crooked. When I lay it down, and you need a flat canvas when you're doing a petal pour, for sure. So see, I, it's rocking. I've got to get it leveled out here. Of course, there's always a chance the canvas can be warped as well, which is not a good thing. One of my corners is really off. Also, have to make sure that my canvas is in the frame. The other thing I have is a big roasting pan that is. Um, heavily covered in paint. But I wanted to show you the neat part about these full pans is that you can go into this full pan and literally peel out your dried layer of paint. After all, acrylic paint is latex. So that is why it comes out so easily. And I really had a lot of paint that had been poured into the bottom of this pan from drips from my canvases. So it's quite a mess. Um, but just to show you how easily it comes out of this pan, and you can just, you know, lift it out and continue to pour over and over and over again in it, which is a great thing. And I'm going to use this for my drips, hopefully. So I'm going to start with And like I said, I did not use silicone today. Um, I hope that some cells will, will appear. But since I usually go for so many cells in my other 
paintings I wanted to do one a little bit different today so this is the the dioxazine purple do the mulberry color This is the, the uh, purple pearl. I don't know if you notice, my paint is going towards the center. That's interesting. It does have a crossbar in the center. I don't, I guess it's, uh, it's not super tight. I obviously can't do it right now, but when you have a loose canvas that's not quite tight enough, you can take the back of it and spray it with water with a little squirt bottle and then blow dry it or let it dry over time or um, you know however it takes for you to get it dry and as it dries it will tighten that canvas up Even though I don't have silicone in it, I can already see small, some small cells, which is obviously, um, I'm always happy about. I can see them right there. I can see them popping up. So I'm kind of excited about that. So once again, it's Deco Art Americana Paints and a little bit of Floetrol, not quite one-to-one. -one. And then I used Vallejo, which is V-A-L-L-E-J-O, a pouring medium and pouring gloss and or a gloss medium and I put them in a bottle together and uh, I want to say it was probably about an 80 20 ratio and probably the pouring medium was the 20% and the gloss medium was probably the 80% if I'm wrong I'll correct that in my comments below the video I'm liking this just the way it's looking before I even do anything with it <clears throat> Got to be able to use my hands and tilt. So basically I'm trying to clear off spots on the table here. So I have plenty of room. I'm just going to get every little drop of color that I can. And then here's the silver.
All right. So I'm, I'm liking this, and what I'm thinking I might not should have done that. You always wonder, you always second guess yourself as to whether you should or shouldn't have done something. But, um, it's always harder with large canvases to maneuver them as well when you've got kind of a limited space to work with. So I think I'm going to leave this as is. Make sure all my edges and corners are covered. There's an area here where I stuck my finger through it, where the paint is separated. So I'm gonna take it this way a little bit. Let that close in that space. One thing I am going to do is put my heat gun to it. Um, the cells are going to come through anyway as it dries. So I'm going to just put heat on it for a minute and see what happens. So it didn't really, that didn't do a whole lot cell wise. It's just, it just brought out a lot of little tiny air bubble dots kind of looking things. So I'm going to let it dry and um, I wish I could do the time lapse thing like Melly D does on hers, which is really awesome to watch because you can see it kind of transforming before your eyes, but I don't have the capacity to do that and then film other stuff. So um, 
I'm going to put this aside to dry and when I post the video, the picture at the end of the video will be the dried, finished look. But I think it's going to be kind of pretty. It, it, um, I love purple and I love the way it's kind of, you know, merging together. And I'm hoping the black will kind of disappear like it has here. I would like the black to kind of go away and the purples and whites to kind of take over the piece. And the silver is actually hanging around pretty well and I like that. And it's sometimes hard to get your metallics to show up. So I'm pretty pleased with this just the way it is. I'm curious to see what it's going to look like when it's dry. that you can see this a little bit more up close. So there's some cells up here at the top. They're, they're here and there. They're not, there's not many cells, but um, I do like the effect overall of the Petal Pour. It has a very different look from dirty pores that have a lot of cells and things like that. 